What's something creepy that has happened to you that you still occasionally think about to this day, part one? Also, please keep supporting us by subscribing our channel Thread Tonic. Account one. When I was around 11, I was at softball practice, and for whatever reason, the practice ended early, so I had to wait at the park for my grandpa to come and pick me up. I ended up having to wait alone for about 30 minutes because I didn't have a cell phone to call and tell my grandpa that practice ended early. I remember sitting on the swings when an adult man, in his 30s or 40s, came and sat down next to me. He asked if he knew me, and I said no, and he told me that I must just have one of those pretty faces that feel recognizable to anybody. I remember feeling happy about the compliment, and I kept talking to him. Eventually, he told me that he had his car with him and that he could drive me home to my grandparents' house so that they didn't have to worry about picking me up and I wouldn't have to wait any longer. Being 11, I didn't think anything of this and proceeded to get into this stranger's car. Luckily, my grandpa showed up just in time and I remember seeing his car and jumping out to meet him. The stranger sped off without talking to my grandpa and that was the last I ever heard about it. This is such a vivid memory for me, and I often find myself thinking about what would have happened to me and what a different person I would be today if my grandpa hadn't shown up when he did. Account 2. Smoking a blunt with the fucker who had raped and murdered a friend of mine the previous evening. We were all hypothesizing what had happened while the psycho who had done it was casually trying to plant disinformation. Cops came for him later that afternoon. Edit. I was somewhat incorrect on the timeline. Cops talked to him later that day, but he wasn't arrested for a few more. Account 3. My friend planned his ex's murder. He hosted a DD game weekly for the five of us. For two weeks, he told us to move our stuff as he was going to do spring cleaning. He forgot to do it the first week, then the second week he did it. The time we gamed after that, he got a call from the cops saying he X was missing, and he told them he didn't know anything about it. They found her car later that same night. The cops checked the security cameras of the area back traced when it showed up, the day she went missing, who got out of the car, and where they went, which was someone of a similar build as him getting into his truck. The cameras showed him dropping off the truck earlier that day before she went missing. That following week, he got swatted, they had 48 hours to search his house and truck. A month later, they used her cell phone pings and his truck GPS to tie it together and found her body. He was arrested. She went missing in late August, and they found her body in late September as well. He has been in jail since then. I think about it daily, having sat across a table from him every week for seven years. He threatened me with a pipe wrench once. I think he used that to kill her. Account 4 Pretty sure I almost got kidnapped when I was a kid. I was 10 years old walking home from school and an elderly couple driving by stopped and asked me for directions. They were looking for the street I was walking towards. So I pointed them in that direction. Even though my directions were very clear, both were acting confused and asked if I can get in the car and guide them there. And then they would drive me home. I told them it was fine. My house was right here. I lied. They were pressuring, guilting me a lot, and being too nice about wanting to drive me home, it gave me a really weird feeling in my stomach. So I pretended to walk towards a house that wasn't mine and they drove off. Account 5. Suicide Trigger Warning. This happened when I was seven. I was walking downtown with my dad who was buying a CD. We used to go to the record store, and he'd chat music with the workers, and I'd play on the Sega Dreamcast. I remember there was a guy watching me play, and it looked like he was crying. He was just kind of staring at me. But because I was seven and had Vidya, I didn't think much of it. About 20 minutes later, there was a bunch of people gathering outside. So we went out to see what the commotion was about. The guy who was crying was now on top of the roof, standing on the ledge. He screamed, this is for you, Daniel, my name, and jumped. My dad put his entire body over mine to prevent me from seeing it. But the guy who jumped died. I thought about it every day for over 20 years. Skip ahead to about five years ago. I'm now at a Christmas staff party, drinking heavily with my team. A guy on said team. And I have heart-to-hearts about our pasts. And he tells me that he is bisexual. 
However, he hasn't been with a man in 20 years. He used to date a man behind his girlfriend's back who committed suicide when he wouldn't leave her. Co-worker's name is Daniel. He was in the crowd with me. Two strangers forever changed together, but 20 years in the past. This may not be creepy to some, but it haunted me for most of my life. Account 6. When I was 10 years old, I lived in the middle of rural Alabama. We had some odd neighbors, being curious kids. My friend and I followed my neighbor and his son and daughter one day when they left their house and walked into the woods. I was very familiar with the area because it was back when kids could roam free until the streetlights came on. Anyway, we trailed them for about two miles, through the woods, across an old cemetery, and down a railroad. They stopped at a clearing beside the tracks, and my friend and I hid opposite of them and watched. They started digging and kept pulling up bones and putting them in a bucket. We got scared and bolted. I immediately told my parents, but they didn't believe me. I'm 32 and remember that day clearly. Account 7. I moved into a shared house, and my housemate told me half the house had burned down and been rebuilt, and the ghost of the old man who died in the fire visited them. I never had any experience of the old man, but when half asleep I'd very clearly feel a cat or two jump onto my bed, settle down, and purr. It happened often. It was quite chilled out, and I didn't mind. I would hear the distinctive thump of a cat jumping off the bed from time to time, but there was never a physical cat there. Once in that house, but a different bedroom, I had a terrifying lucid dream in which a possum, cat-like hand, claw was coming up from inside of my bed, clawing my thigh. It hurt so much I thought I might be gouging myself in my sleep, but woke up unharmed. Months later, I moved out and met the landlord who lived a few doors down to return keys, etc., I said something like, must have been scary when the house burned down killed the owner. Were they living here at the time? He said, oh no, the owner was fine. He got out, but he had about a dozen cats and several of them died in the fire. I'm pretty sure I was sharing my bed with ghost cats. Not sure what the story was with the dream, but I've had a couple of lucid dreams in my time and they have always been incredibly scary. Account 8 I was camping in the Simpson Desert on a multi-day trip. It was a very remote location. We hadn't planned on stopping at this point, but it was getting late, and one of the trailers had blown a tire, so we decided to repair it, and then call it a day. Being so remote, there aren't any signs for anything, but according to our map, the land we were on was military. Probably for training and stuff. We didn't think much of it at the time, but I dare say we shouldn't have been there. Anyways, it did add to the eerie, remote, and desolate feeling in the area. I remember after dinner we were all stargazing. There were so many meteorites and satellites whizzing around. It was fantastic. I remember watching one satellite move, very slowly, much slower than the rest. Then I noticed another. Not far from it moving very slowly in the same direction, I pointed it out to the group, and we were all watching these two slow satellites almost follow each other. Then the first one just made this hard right turn, and we were all like WTH. Then the one behind it did the same thing, and they continued to follow each other before both turning again. It really fucked with me, I couldn't explain it at the time. And it was so bizarre, I have no idea what it was. I'm not one to put much heed into conspiracies or aliens or the like but it fucked with me for sure. The only logical conclusion I can come to, and it does help me sleep a little better at night, is that they were geostationary satellites changing altitudes, orbits. But I'm no space expert. That's the best I have come up with. I have no clue what I saw that night. Account 9. I was probably 11 or 12. There was a telephone pole in our backyard that stood in the middle of our back fence, an electrician was working on it and needed access to our backyard for a couple days. One of the nights, my best friend was over for a sleepover, and we were in the fort we made in my room. I was facing toward her, away from my bedroom door, and she gets startled and let's put kind of a half-hearted scream. Yelp, she said. She thought for a split second she saw a man's face peering between the sheets through the entrance to our fort. We both felt really creeped out the rest of the night, but just fell asleep eventually. 
The next day or so, my family realized that two of our motor scooters we kept in the back were missing. And sometime later, my dad recognized the electrician on Sacramento's Top Ten Wanted. I'm pretty sure that night was the night he stole the scooters. And he must have come inside the house through the back door and left or something when he realized we were awake. Account 10. When I was in third grade, I was home alone with my quadriplegic grandma from after school until my mom came home. One day the phone rings, and I answer it, and an unfamiliar man's voice says, Hey, just one more bite. Did you just get home from school? I say, yeah. Who is this? Instead of answering me, he started asking things like, Do you ever touch yourself? Do you like to look at girls? Being in third grade, of course, I was like, nope, and hung up pretty quick. I told my parents, but nothing ever came of it. I still wonder to this day who it was, how they knew my name and my whereabouts. This was back on a corded landline with no caller ID either. Account 11. I took an Uber at around 11 p.m. to get to my house. Halfway through, he started taking random turns into smaller streets, citing traffic. We weren't even moving towards my destination at this point. I politely asked him to follow the directions that Google was suggesting to which he asked me to shut up. He then ended the trip in the Uber app, but wouldn't stop the car or drop me off. This happened in India, where the police are next to useless. I had pepper spray with me. I'm a guy. My friends used to laugh about how I always carry that thing everywhere. I started spraying at his direction. He crashed the car. I ran out. Here's what I still think about. Uber takes away the SOS option after the driver ends the trip. The driver knows where you live, so even if you take any real action, he could still harm you. The worst part was no one really gave a shit. When I told my parents or my friends, they always find a way to blame me for it. Maybe I was rude to him. Maybe I overreacted. Made me understand what millions of women and men go through after much more serious trauma. Account 12. I can't really remember how old I was, maybe eight or nine years old, but I was walking to school and this older guy, mid-sixties, was going the other direction. I remember thinking he looked weird because it was early so the daylight was fairly dim, but he wore sunglasses. It wasn't cold, but he was wearing a black trench coat. I stepped off the sidewalk to go around him out of arm's distance because even my child brain registered that he wasn't someone I wanted to allow close to me. Turns out I was right. This wacko starts kicking leaves and throwing mulch at me from a nearby garden. I was too freaked out to register what he was shouting, but he was grunting out something. I sprinted for about two blocks before I got to crossing guard in front of my school. I thought about not telling someone, but it kept haunting me for the rest of the day until I finally told my parents, we filed a police report, but I have no idea what happened to him. Account 13. I was about 12 years old and I was playing hide and seek. I was hiding behind a tree, but it was also next to a road. Two guys pulled up in a car and asked if I wanted to see their dog. I said, sure. Then they said it was in the back seat and I would have to go into the car to see it. At that point, I was getting a bad feeling, so I said, never mind. They insisted one more time for me to see it in the back seat and I said, no. Sometimes I wonder where I would be now if I was stupid enough to do it and how terrifyingly easy it is to lure other kids into that situation. Account 14. Okay, here's one. In the late 80s, mom was in the market for a house and finally found one. She met the lady who owned it, signed a contract and all that. And a few days later, the lady was brutally murdered, stabbed repeatedly in the house. I don't know what my mom was thinking, but she went through with the purchase, even though the murderer was still on the loose. My mom and dad had divorced. Then my dad died. But for years, she suspected he must have ordered a hit on her, and they had killed the wrong person, because he was that type of abusive person who would. Anyway, the bloodstains never fully came off the carpet, and it was just a creepy reminder. The killer was never caught, so it was always kind of creepy living there. The neighbors talked and suspected the husband or some workers who had done some work in the house a few days earlier, since there was no sign of forced entry, but didn't convict anyone. One day, a little after my mom had moved into the house, a teenage boy knocked on the door. My mom asked who it was, and he said he was a neighbor and asked if he could borrow a cup of sugar. 
She didn't open the door, just said she didn't have any, and didn't think anything of it. Anyway, 23 years later, they had opened some cold cases and found the killer, it was that neighbor kid, 15 years old at the time. And he confessed he came into the house by asking the lady to borrow a cup of sugar. If my mom had opened the door, she would have probably been killed too. Account 15. I grew up in a decently rural area, about 40 mins outside a city. One of my neighbors had to call the cops once because someone was back on their property late at night and had started a fire. Cops show up and arrest a man who had murdered his GF and was trying to burn the body. Dumbass pulled off the road thinking he was in the middle of nowhere and was actually only like 50E from the back porch of one house and in view of multiple.